Welcome to day four. So I've been kind of pissy farting around this morning. That's actually a word. Look it up. It might be a northern thing, but um, I'm pissy farting around this morning with these uh, posts on the backside. I figure nobody wants to see me climbing on a ladder with a skill saw anymore. Uh, it's just not the best thing to do. So my recommendation would be if you got to do this kind of stuff. So, I mean, you can look down there and you can see these aren't pretty. They're not cut great. Um, if I ever do this again, I'll probably cut these on the ground because uh, it's just it's just not good being up on the ladder trying to get angles and doing all that stuff. So, um, yeah, pissy farting because it's stupid rain. It'll sprinkle for a little bit, then it'll stop, then it'll sprinkle, then it'll stop. So I need to get the laser out. I don't want to get it wet. Uh, the cannon, not waterproof. We talked about that before. So it's still sitting up. So it's going to be me and you on the GoPro for a little while. And I'm going to... Uh, start pulling off these banding boards so the idea is right so just like this this is a 12 footer here two by six by 12 but i'm going to run a 16 footer then an eight footer then we'll do 16 foot all the way along the the side 16 foot along this side and then the opposite i'll do 16 and eight but remember now none of these uh, pre-cut boards are true to size unless they're literally pre-cut like uh studs the two by four studs we're going to get are pre-cut these ones are not uh and i'll show you that once we get over here on the saw horses i'll uh i'll show you what i'm talking about and, and show you what you need to do so that you have your true dimensions so uh let's head over that way and see what i can rig up with the uh with the gopro so we can uh start cutting some of these boards and get this thing banded up So there you see we got the 16 footer right and here we're at what's that 16 foot and one two three eighths so is that three eighths in the grand scheme of things really going to kill us probably not um but i, I want to keep it you know as square and true as possible uh because wood is only so forgiving it's forgiving and it'll let you push and pull and tug which we're going to have to do here in a little bit um but only so much. So if I can take some of that out, some of that inherent stuff out now, that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm just gonna square this off uh, with my speed square. I'll hit it with a skill saw and uh, then we'll go from there. Here's that 16 footer that I just cut down. We're here, TGO post number one, the TGO Norma post is what we'll call this, okay? That's our base post. So I got all the stuff ready and then I came back with the laser level, set it back up because the rain stopped. And then what I did was I made a mark on the side of my uh, reader of where level is with this post. Because that's what I want is to make everything level as well as square. So I just, I just held it here and you're not gonna be able to see this but you might be able to hear it. As I get closer, it's telling me to go down Right there, I get to the black line. Solid beep, we're good. So we're good right there. That's where we need to be. So I'll turn that off for now. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna square this up right at the end of this post. So I can use the speed square just like that. And that's nice and flush right there. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna tack in one, uh, one nail, just so we can go to the other end and we can adjust that and see what that looks like. So here we go, one nail. So now uh, let's move down to the other end and, and see what it looks like at the end of the 16 feet. So same thing here. So we're at that, we're at that uh, 16 foot spot for the, I guess the second over, third one over, whatever. Um, not quite in the center, but we kind of expected that. Uh, like I said, these, these posts are a little bit loosey-goosey. So same thing, I'm going to check here, look for my mark, it's telling us to come on down, come on down, come on down. Right there. Okay, so if I push over, we're about an eighth, about an eighth off, I think. I don't know if you can hear that. We got a mockingbird mocking us. 
that's kind of cool all right so yep so we're good here so i'm going to push this post over a little bit because i want it to be as close to centered as as we can get well i guess i need to mark center don't I? let me mark the center of this post so again we're a five and a half so three and a quarter there we go and then i'm going to just put one here and then i'm going to go back and set the middle post so um, let's go back and do that one and then we'll step back and look at the whole thing so you understand what what we're talking about so here we are at the center post i just checked it again to make sure that it was level we can do it again though so you can see turn the sound on so we're going to slide you right up there let's see where we're at here actually i'm going to do it on the inside because there's my mark and i want to be able to see it right next to the wood so then you can see it and hear it come on down it says come on down right there is our black mark and we're good we're, we're dead on it so actually this board is dead on it so i'm going to put that there i'm going to do my I'm going to do an X. And then I'm going to go back and finish nailing that corner off, nail that 16 foot part off. I'm going to fire up the generator, the air compressor, move this camera back so you can just watch me work. If I come across something that's uh, different uh, or I need to explain, I will. If not, we're just gonna run this footage while I uh, while I get this banding done. Jump in here, right? We just finished this 16 footer, first board, done. We split this right in the center. Now we know this is 16 feet because we already cut this board down to 16 feet exactly. So I know I need an eight foot board to go to the outside corner of this post right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut an eight foot board and then I'm gonna make this post fit that 24 feet because I want this to be a true 24 foot wall right so outside corner to outside corner 24 foot wall so i'm gonna take uh i'm gonna pull out another 16 footer because i already cut this one down to 16 feet and i'm gonna cut it to eight feet okay it might be a little hard to hear uh with that generator running but gotta have it so rolled out the tape look at that 24 feet right on the button doesn't get any better than that does it and then as you saw well maybe you did maybe you didn't it depends on how i put this together um i checked level all the way across so let's start here in the middle level now i know ideally i'd have my four foot level josh is on his way my one of my sons he's bringing it but in the meantime i can keep working with this little level still level center bubble so that's a beautiful thing center bubble there you go so let's keep on trucking we're going to go on to this other side uh, and we'll do a 16 footer going to the back making progress baby okay so like i said we're going to do that 16 foot side now we know it's not 16 feet though the board we need to cut so again it goes back to what we had talked about uh i think earlier in this video maybe a previous video that these boards aren't as thick as they say they are, right? It's not a two by 16, really. Uh, it's a one and a half spam, junk mail, junk phone call, car warranty. Always trying to get my car warranty. So not only are they not the length that they, we think they are and what they think they are, but I'm gonna use these band boards. The one that I just put covers the end. So I need to deduct an inch and a half for this end. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other end. So. Here, let me turn you around so you know what I'm saying. So right here on this corner, this board sticks out all the way to the end right there. So that's 16 feet from the outside of this corner to the outside of that corner. Well, I'm not running that board at full 16 feet. I'm gonna tuck it inside the corner right there. I'll show you once we get over there, once I get this board cut and we get it up there. So that's gonna happen on both ends. It's gonna happen here and it's gonna happen down there. Where is it, where is it? right there. It's gonna happen down there as well. So, what do I need to do? I need to take six inches off. Nope. 
I need to take an inch and a half for each end. So that's three inches all together I need to take off. See? That's why you measure twice. You got to think three times, I guess. So we got 192 minus one, two, three. We're going to cut this board to 189. And it should tuck right in and uh, be snug as a bug in a rug. All right, we were talking about bending wood earlier. Not really bending it, maybe stretching it, not stretching it, pulling it together. So let's see what we got. So here's, I'm trying to put that eight foot piece together here and I got to pull this together and I got to lift it up to get level here. I only got two hands, I'm all by myself still. So ratchet strap, put a couple screws in so uh, I can just screw it in. Let's, uh, let's do the ratchet see what happens oh look at there no struggle close that gap up nice now I'll be able to lift it level without having to pull and gosh that's so much easier so consider that if you're trying to do the same thing make something fit some reinforcements have arrived say hey Josh my other son Josh is here so everything's done as far as the uh, uh, what am I trying to say? Why can't I think of what these are called? The outside boards. Drawing a blank. Um, banding boards are done. So now we're just going to go around and we're going to make sure we're still square and uh, everything is good. Everything is level. We checked it with the little level. I checked it with the big level. Some of them are off by uh, an eighth or a quarter where uh, one banding board is a titch higher than the other. Uh, but I think we'll be able to make that flex a little with the uh, subfloor. So let's... Uh, Let's, let's see what we're doing here. So Josh, burn a foot. Yep. All right, look at that. 25 feet, one eighth of an inch. So we're off by an eighth. So now go up to the top corner. Same thing, Same thing burn a foot. To the corner. You want this inside post or outside? Outside post. post. Right there. All right. Let's see. Well, we're off by a half an inch there. That's okay. Go to that other corner down there, Josh. All right. Well, that's good. That's 25 feet. Stay, stay where you are. Burn a foot outside corner. All right, so there we go. That's the problem, right? We're an inch short here. We're an inch long there. So we're gonna have to get creative again with the ratchet strap, just like we did uh, on the back side over there. And we're gonna have to twist this frame just a titch so we can uh, so we can line this up. But what we're gonna do first is we're gonna get the joist hangers hung and then we're going to twist this and then we're going to tighten it up even more okay so now what we're going to do is i'm going to mark out the locations for the uh joist hangers so we want 16 foot on center joist hangers okay so focus down here josh so if you look right here's our 16 mark right so i'm going to put a mark there and now because we know these boards are not uh what they seem to be we're gonna, they're an inch and a half thick. So we're gonna go back three quarters on each side of this, right? So there's one quarter, two quarters, three quarters right there. And then one quarter, two quarter, three quarters. We're gonna go there. And then I'm gonna draw, well, I'm, just, I'm gonna draw an X here and I'm gonna draw that there. So the X tells me this is where my joist hanger goes. So now what I'm gonna do is run this line down from here, down, down, X here. So now when I go to hang my joist hangers, I know that that's my spot. So what we're gonna do 
is we're just going to go all the way down this side and all the way down that other side and we're going to mark those out. Easy peasy. Because sometimes you're the windshield and sometimes you're the bug, uh, we're, we're going to change plans. We were going to use those blocks to uh, pre-hang the joist hangers. Too many hands, too much going on, isn't going to happen. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take those boards, we're going to cut them down. So now remember, we're not doing 16 feet boards. Now granted, it's 16 feet from this corner to that corner. However, uh, we're not 16 feet on the inside. We need to subtract an inch and a half for this and an inch and a half for that board. So we're going to take those three inches off our 16 and then we're going to toenail these, uh, just one toenail into place. And then we're going to twist this frame so we get it back square again. So let's do that. All right, so this is what we're going to do here. So this corner down here, from this corner to that corner, we're an inch long from that far uh, east, let's see, what is that? Northeast corner to this corner, we're about an inch short. So we're gonna try to pull these two together. So hopefully those two will come together and it'll, it'll twist it just enough so that we get this thing squared up and, um, and then we can hang the joists and then throw the, the, uh, the, the flooring down. So we'll do the same thing we did over here, put a couple screws, we'll do a couple of uh, 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 ratchet straps and we'll just kind of go click by click until we get where we need it. this up so now. thank you to uh r and r buildings they usually use chains but i don't have chains um you can see we got a little i got a little warp going on over here but that'll straighten itself out and we'll get these bad boys hung up yeah. they say keep making right angles everything will square up yep so there you go square now our inside measurements will be perfect right so the other the other reason we're doing this right not just because I'm anal retentive like that but everything else is is made for these dimensions right so the we're about to put the sheet goods down on the floor uh, after we do the obviously we got to do the uh, joists first the joists then we're going to do the subfloor well those are four by eight sheets and they're square straight from the factory they're square uh, so we have to make sure that all this is square so they fit uh, because when they meet up on the joist, they're gonna split half and half, you'll see. And we just gotta make sure they all match up. So that's why I'm being super particular about making sure that we're all square because just like everything else in life, right? It starts with your foundation. If you don't have a great foundation in life, you're not you're gonna have a shabby building that you're living in. So by God, there's your foundation, start there. So now that we got it figured out what our actual length is, what we did, is we went ahead and we made a template. Okay, so we cut this board first uh, because these boards behind me were, like I said before, a half inch too short. We made a template. I wrote the word template on our template so we know that it doesn't get mixed in with the other boards. And then all we're gonna do, after I crown the board, right, so you've seen this a thousand times, right? You look down the board, which way is up, which way is down, and you can kind of see this one has a little bow this way to it, right? So. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw another arrow on here. So when we're going to install it, this end up. Okay, and then we look at the ends to see if any of them are janky. And by janky, I mean like this right here, right? I mean, if we can trim some of that out and we have a more solid chunk of meat to, to nail into, why wouldn't we do that, right? So we check it for all those things. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna take this template, we're gonna set it on top, which Josh can't do both at the same time because he's running the camera too but maybe maybe we can get a little but we'll set it on top like this he'll get his end flush 
get our left and rights flush. Looks good to me. Flush. And then come on down here, Josh. And then I'm gonna just go right here and I'm just gonna draw a line. Then we're gonna move the template out of the way and I'm gonna cut that line. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. But I gotta turn the generator back on to cut the line. So we're gonna cut off here, but you get the picture. between the, the joists, right? So this side, the upper side, we only got one nail. So the great thing is I can just tap, 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 right? And now I'm lined up on this line. I should be lined up on that line on that side. Yep, looking good. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just slide this joist hanger up. Like I was saying before, little tab here to hold it in place. Squeeze it together on this side. No. Nope. Nail that. What the? F so I got my line lined up. I'm just going to tap that into place. There we go. I'm going to grab a nail. One straight, and then I'm gonna come on the other side. Still lined up nice and square there. See if that's gonna, I don't wanna sit straight, so I'm gonna stand up to fix this one, which that happens sometimes, so it's good if we can learn together. That's there. Nail there. All right, there you go. So we're not gonna skip on any of these nails. Come on back in close real quick, Josh. You see there's two on the outside and these two on the angles on the inside right here. I don't know how we can see that, but once I started. So we're gonna do eight nails per joist hanger um, because this is, this is what everything's, all the marbles are sitting on this, so. We got to make sure it's good and secure. And these are nails. I'd rather spend a couple extra bucks on some nails than have one of these things come undone. So that's where we're at. So Josh is going to pick one side. I'm going to pick the other, divide and conquer. Let's get this thing done. While Josh is finishing up down there with the last joist hanger, let me show you what we got done today. So we got majority of the joists finished. We still got to do the math on these. It looks like they're going to come out right in the center of these uh, posts. And of course these are eight feet. So um, I'll figure that out tomorrow, figure out what we're gonna do with that center post right there too. Uh, I think it's gonna be a side-by-side -side thing, but but everything is level. Um, I'm liking I'm liking level there. I mean, it's, it's all the way across. The four foot level tells the truth. And I, I don't have gaps or, or nothing underneath any of this wood, so. Uh, we're in good shape. I think we'll call this uh, just a day, not a video, because I want to put all this flooring stuff into one video. So we still got to do blocks. We still got to finish the those posts. So we still got a lot of work to do to make this all make sense. Because something I didn't talk about, and I'll talk about it tomorrow, is uh, span tables. So whatever you're going to build, make sure you check out a span table for whatever material you're using. So we're using southern yellow pine and it's maximum for two by six i think it's nine feet one inch something i have the chart in the in the clipboard i'll show you tomorrow but uh it's uh it's five o'clock so you know what that means y'all have a good night we'll see you in the morning
Well, hey friends, welcome back. <clears throat> what is this, day uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We're day five. Hopefully today, fingers crossed, by the end of today, this thing's gonna be sheeted uh, and we're gonna be all done. So, um, we just gotta finish up these two joists. It's gonna be a little tricky, so, uh, uh, because we, we did some twisting, we did some turning, uh, that auger kicked our butts a little, so everything's not exactly lined up. And of course, those fall right at our eight foot mark, which is where our sheet goods are gonna end up. So, uh, so we gotta get those straight. So you'll see how that goes. Um, so we'll do those. We gotta do those last two posts underneath. We gotta do a cross bracing at the eight foot mark on the 16 foot side. And then we're gonna lay that, uh, <clears throat> I don't think we have Advantech, but it's still tongue and groove uh, subfloor that we're gonna lay on there. So uh, yeah, get yourself something to drink. It's cold today. It's like, I don't know, 35, 36, and the wind's whipping today. So uh, probably not much talking on here because that microphone likes to pick up all the wind. So I'll probably just do the uh, loop thing here and uh, anything else we'll, we'll pick on the little camera. So get yourself something warm to drink. Let's get to busy. Okay, so like I said, um, these posts are right at eight foot. So that's where our sheet goods are gonna land out and they're off a little bit. So what we're doing here is we measured, we're gonna have to cut this post. So I figured out which way was up and down. I figured out the crown, right? And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this section out right here, three quarters of an inch, and it's four and three quarters, four and a half uh, deep. Uh, we're gonna cut that. This right here is coming out, okay? And then we're gonna nail it this way on the side into that post. Uh, and then we'll nail it from the end also. We're, we're just gonna hit it from all different directions to try to shore it up because we're not gonna be able to put a joist hanger on there. So not ideal, I know, uh, but you gotta do what you gotta do. So this whole section's coming out. And then what I'm gonna do, actually come around this side, Josh. Let me show you these folks what, uh, what we're working with here. So I'm making my marks. I wanna go three quarters of an inch deep, right? So I'm making my mark there at three quarters of an inch lines up with that mark. And then you see these little teeth right here, they line up. So that's one inch, uh, that's three quarters of an inch, right? It's a little easier down here, inch and a half, inch and a quarter, inch and three quarters, two inches. So what I can do is I can just put my, my pencil right in here. I'm right at three quarters of an inch and I can slide my speed square. Well, if I can keep my pencil in there and I make, I make my line right at three quarters of an inch. So it's easier than just measuring it a bunch of times and trying to do that. Just, just use those little teeth on the inside of the speed square. So now let's, uh, let's see if we can get this bad boy cut out. And there you go. Floor joists, done. Looking smooth too. And as you see, uh, if you go back to look at the first video where we did the, the uh, batter boards, we talked about saving your string, right? That's the reason we did the little loops with the finger. If you hadn't seen it, go back and check it out. I'll try to throw it in here for you so you can see it. Um, but now I still have this string and I can use it again. And thankfully it hasn't rained and it hasn't been terrible. It's not super dirty. So I can just throw this back in the box and we can use it again. If I was smart, I would have put it back on a little reel, but I'm not that smart. Okay, next task, we got to crawl underneath here. We're going to run a string from the two center posts to the far side, and then those center posts across uh, to see where we're at that way as far as uh, getting, that, getting these posts squared up. And then we're going to see where it lies on the joists. And then determine are we going to cut them short and just put the joists on top, or are we going to do like we did on these uh, posts and we're gonna notch it out and support the post that way. So uh, yeah, let's go do that. We went ahead and we rehung the strings off of the posts that are already in place, right? So these posts we know, uh, right? That one we had to do the center with the joist hanger. It came across 16 feet and then we came off that left side. So to keep in fashion or to keep in line with that 16 foot board, that's how we hung the strings. Hung, hung, hung. Ooh, okay. So what we have now is if you look straight down-ish, and I'll get the four foot level to figure out exactly what straight is, this is gonna tell us 
how the post is gonna go. And then uh, we'll set this thing up on both of these. Uh, and we got them both pretty much squared up right over it. I like it. We'll get these uh, leveled up, squared up, see where they fit with the, uh, with the joists. And like I said, whether we're gonna notch them or just cut them short and then let them rest underneath there. So um, might not see a bunch from under here, but uh, that's what we're gonna do. We're finishing up these center posts and we have a little bit different uh, post uh, hangers than we had on the outside. Just cause like I said, I could only find 10 of those. So I went ahead and got these two. And these are the uh, Simpson Strong Tie uh, ABA 66Z Zulu. So essentially what we're gonna do down here on our piece of concrete, I already marked out my spacing, uh, where I want to put that uh, in relation to our string lines, in relation to our board right up here that's gonna be 16 feet from the starting point. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, set that inside those marks. I'm gonna use my magic marker, my Sharpie Sharpie. I'm gonna hold that. I'm gonna mark my circle where I'm gonna where I'm gonna drill my hole. So one of the reasons we waited, if you remember, is because I wanted this concrete to dry up real nice and get real hard. And it has dried up and gotten real hard. So let's uh, let's drill a hole. All right. And now Simpson Strong Tie recommends that you blow out the hole. So luckily for us, we got an air compressor. We blow out the hole. Easy, easy breezy, lemon squeezy. All right, so then we put our bracket here. Then we put our square. Then we put our round washer. We got a square washer, we got a round washer. And we're gonna put our nut on top, like so. But leave it flush with this screw because we're gonna take this slide it in the hole and the hole's just a smidge tight which is what you want it to be hang on it's still going my bad i just can't see it all right well pick it back up three right. two one action <laughs> um so it's a smidge tight which is what you want it to be but then we're going to take this and we're going to just tap it down into the hole there we go that sounds like the bottom to me and then um you just take your your socket now we got our our lines all lined up again that we drew out it's still loose it looks tight but it's loose and then we're just going to tighten this bad boy in place there you go and then once you feel like it's good and tight put the post back on and then we're going to set the post so let's get this thing set up well let me see if i can do it myself And then if you look up top here, we jacked it up again, Josh. How did we do that? So we measured, we thought we measured correctly for this uh, uh, post so that it would sit right there on top. But golly, I mean, it looks like we're off by an inch or so. So uh, let me measure, recut. Nothing the Sawzall couldn't fix real quick for us. Um, so if you look up top now, you see we, get, we got it nice. It's gonna sit, sit pretty right there on that post. And then just like the other ones, we're just gonna come on and we're gonna zip these bad boys in place. As you see on the level, we're level there. All right, we're almost at 16 feet, but we're gonna fix that here in a little bit and then we're just barely touching our strings. So Josh is gonna go ahead and nail this bad boy in place. And there you go. We are officially done with floor joists. Thank you, baby Jesus. We're gonna come back uh, later. We're gonna see once we get the uh, subfloor on here, we're gonna see how it feels, and if I have to come back and do blocking, I can always climb underneath here and do it. Not that I wanna do that, 
um, but this tedious stuff is just killing us and it feels way more secure than it did so next step we're going to throw down that insulation you'll see you know if you know boss of the swamp you know what i'm talking about that should take about 10 minutes and then we're going to start slinging uh, big old chunks of uh, subfloor so hang on here we go some of you astute observers will notice we actually went ahead and put some blocking in we changed we changed our minds because the um some of the joists were just a little bit off quarter half an inch maybe three quarters of an inch and my fear was we're not gonna be able to see it once we put down uh this uh, uh radiant barrier this is not the bubble foil that the uh boss of the swamp talks about it's very similar product i reached out to the company i used it in my attic uh, i reached out to the company and said hey will it work in this application they said yep absolutely and i had two rolls left over so i thought well you know what it, it'll work to help bridge uh uh vapor barrier bridge not vapor barrier well yeah it works as a vapor barrier uh, but it'll help uh thermal bridging that's what the word i'm looking for uh and then it, like he always talks about the uh the rodents don't like this stuff so great installation for underneath even though we'll still come back and close this in eventually so uh a little bit of time lapse we're gonna roll this out real quick uh staple it down and then uh onto the subfloor so as promised we uh i mentioned the, the floor joist spacing right so you need to figure this out for whatever size uh, building you're going to do uh, so that you don't overextend your joists because they can only span so far uh, before they uh, start uh, bowing. Um, so there's a couple things you got to figure out. What's your live load? What's your dead load? And um, and all that stuff, right? Dead load is like the walls, the ceiling. Uh, if you're in a snowy area, you have a snow load, right? Live load is you walking back and forth um, and all that kind of stuff. So you got to figure out those live loads, dead loads, all that good stuff, right? And then you could just go, the IRC table has uh, the span chart for different species of lumber. So figure out what you're using. We're using two by sixes. We're doing 16 on center. So our maximum span is nine feet, one inch. Um, so you can just look at that and say, okay, um, you know, what, how far can, I, can we span? So we're only spanning eight feet in between. So we have actually one foot and one inch or 13 inches that, that we could go further uh, to span with these boards. And then underneath, we're gonna put uh, across the center, we're gonna put two by sixes under there as well to hold them up in the center. So, so that's gonna be our support in the center. Um, and maybe one on each side because I ordered too many two by sixes. So, so that's what I'm talking about. So, so Google it, look it up, Not maybe not Google, uh, duck duck go it figure it out find find a joist table and uh, figure out how far you can span for whatever kind of wood that you have so I know I keep promising but here we are underneath floor joists right and I keep talking about we got to do this cross bracing because our span for these floor joists is only nine feet one inches uh, so this right here is our eight foot mark at this post so what I'm gonna do is you see over there I got a uh, just a little a brace that I just threw together to hold that in because if you remember from the pole barn video the uh, clamps just didn't work out too well so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna lift this up just there get it flush with the end or as flush as I can see it's flush you can see up top it's flush the bottom's sticking out but that's because that over there is too low still okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drive this, um, this anchor, actually I'm gonna move it, then I'm gonna drive it, uh, and then I'll go over there, do the same thing, and then anchor uh, in the middle as well. I'm gonna put two in each uh, post. So let me do that and I'll come back. All right, so there you see, there you see anchor one is in place. And like I said, we got a gap here, or uh, it's not flush, but once we pull that end up, it'll get flush. and. Same as all the other boards, we did crown up. So I looked, and you can almost kind of tell from here how that crowns up that way. So that'll work out nicely to give some support to those to those uh, to those beams. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to go across here, and again, it's just me, so it's hard to film and do stuff at the same time. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll do it, then I'll come back and I'll show you what I did. So I'm going to put 
lift that up. I'm going to put two bolts in that one. Come back, put two bolts in the center one. Come back, put the final bolt in this one. Uh, and then later, I will come back. Once I get the generator and the nail gun and all that out, I'll come back and I'll nail these as well. Because again, we talked about uh, vertical shear, but these are lag bolts. These aren't just regular old screws. So they're more than capable of holding all this weight. So let's go do that. Then we'll come back. All right, there you go. Now you see what I'm talking about. So got two of those lag bolts there. Like I said, we'll come back and throw some more nails in that just for a little added security. But those would be plenty for right now. And then those joists just sitting right there on top of that. So that gives us our support. I might come back and put one on the other side later. I'll see once I start getting the walls if this feels like it's firm it up. I mean, it's it's way steadier than it was, but all the way across looking good, looking nice and tight. Everything's coming together great. So uh, there you go. I don't know where this is gonna fit in with the videos, uh, but I know there's gonna be questions of, hey, why didn't you do that? Well, here it is. We did it, it's done. So. Now we're going to go get the uh, the wood for the walls. Well, I think we're going to call it there for now, friends. Um, as you see, we got that uh, radiant barrier down. And uh, that's it. I mean, it's solid. We're, we measured, uh, we did our cross-reference lines. We're off by a quarter of an inch over there. Um, and we're dead nuts on this this angle. Uh, same thing on the sides. It's absolute miracle that, that we're making it this far. But it's been a pleasure. I mean, it's been absolutely joyous uh, to be able to do this work because we know it's for ourselves and uh, God has truly blessed us with the the ability to do this to be able to share it with you again like I always talk about to be able to have the resources that we have to be able to go to other YouTube channels and use them as a resource it's absolutely blessed so we're gonna call it right here for tonight and uh, then I think I'm gonna do a whole separate video on the subfloor because the subfloor that we have is not Advantech. Everybody uses Advantech, which is a great product. I don't doubt that it is. Uh, I've never used it, uh, but the stuff that we got is not Advantech. It's the only thing that the local company, the Harris Plumbing and Electric folks, that's this is what they use. So that's what we're going with because we're trying to keep it all local as much as we can. So, uh, so yep, stay tuned for that video. I'll, I'll do just a, probably a short video just all on that. So. Uh, Thanks for coming. Thanks for checking us out. Hopefully you stick along for this whole build series. I mean, 16 by 24 little cabin, we're going we're gonna to build the whole thing. Uh, hopefully we get it at least dried in here in the next two weeks, but we'll see. Maybe I'm a little optimistic. So if you like this video, hit the like button, hit the bell icon, subscribe so you know when we post new content. And uh, look up here. I'm going to post another video up here, probably something related to this, maybe the pole barn. Who knows? But uh, yeah, thanks for coming. As always. Be safe. We'll see you next time.